The story that leads to relativity began in the 19th century with the work of Maxwell Faraday and others on electricity and magnetism. They weren't originally trying to describe light, but when Maxwell discovered how to write equations that described electric and magnetic forces, an amazing thing happened, and those equations actually also predicted and described the propagation of light waves, and as it turned out later, also radio waves, TV waves, gamma rays, and so on, which are all different manifestations of the same basic phenomenon, the same basic kind of wave seen with different energies that came out of Maxwell's equations. And Maxwell's equations have the very funny property that they tell you that light waves will travel in any direction at the same speed that we call the speed of light, regardless of how the light waves are created. That's very funny because, for example, I might throw a ball and it has a certain speed, but if I'm standing on top of a railroad truck when I throw the ball, it'll come out with a bigger speed, the speed of the train plus the speed with which I can throw the ball. So the speed a ball has when I throw it isn't just a property of the ball, it also depends on my state of motion when I throw the ball. But Maxwell's equations say that light always has the same speed in any direction, regardless of how it was created. Now, it took decades before the significance of this sank in. For one thing, people didn't believe it. It was tested experimentally by Michelson and Morley, who found it was right. That wasn't, I don't think, what they thought they were doing when they did the experiment, but that was the answer they got. But even after the experiment, people were confused about what it meant. And physics was in a state of confusion in the late 19th and early 20th century. The time was right for a new theory, which was Einstein's relativity, but Einstein was the one who had the bold thinking to put it together. Einstein's point of view was to accept that the equations of electricity and magnetism were correct, and that our traditional intuition, which physicists expressed in the form of Newton's laws of motion, was what had to change. So he developed a new theory, or at least a new way of looking at existing theories. He modified Newton's laws, but he kept in pure form Maxwell's equations of electricity and magnetism, and that was how he created special relativity. Special relativity, I think, was a little bit like calculus. Uh, calculus had been invented centuries earlier by Newton and Leibniz, and it changed the world when they invented calculus. It was far more powerful than what was there before. However, the time was ripe for it, and their contemporaries were inventing bits and pieces, although they didn't see the whole picture. It was a little bit like that when Einstein invented special relativity, which is what I've described, where he modified Newton's laws to deal with the reality of the properties of light. But 10 years later, Einstein did something far more marvelous, and for this, the world really wasn't ready. If it hadn't been for Einstein's vision, it would have been a long time before this would have been done. Einstein recognized and understood far more sharply than anyone else at the time that not only were Newton's laws of motion inconsistent with Maxwell's theory of light, but Newton's laws of gravity were inconsistent with special relativity. And again, he recognized that it was Newton's theory that had to change. So um, he developed a new conception of gravity that, um, in a sense, was made by imitating Maxwell's laws of light. But it turned out to be a much more difficult and much deeper theory. In technical language, it's a nonlinear theory. The geometry that's involved that he needed to use was much more sophisticated than any mathematics that physicists had dealt with before. He had to use and develop the theory of curved space-time, and his basic concept was that when a planet goes around the sun, it's not because it's attracted to the sun, as Newton would have said. Rather, the sun has created curvature in space-time, and the planet is trying to find the closest thing to a straight line in a curved space-time. Just like Einstein's theories were developed to resolve contradictions between previously existing theories,
The same was true for quantum theory. In fact, it happened, or it got started, in the same period that Einstein was developing relativity theory, and he himself was one of the protagonists. With quantum theory, the trouble started when the electron was discovered, just near the beginning of the 20th century. And the problem with the electron, it's an electrically charged particle, and as far as one could see, it was just a, a point particle, but at any rate, it was much smaller than anything known. And there was also the atomic nucleus discovered by Rutherford in his famous scattering experiments. And then there's a problem, which is that the electron attracted to the atomic nucleus by electrical forces should be emitting electromagnetic radiation, otherwise known as light waves, according to Maxwell's theory of electromagnetism. And when physicists calculated how long it would take an electron to spiral into an atomic nucleus, and therefore for the atom to collapse by emitting light waves, they got a ridiculously small time, much less than a million millionth of a second. So clearly something was wrong, and a new kind of theory was needed. So Bohr took a famous step in 1913 with the Bohr atom, where he just guessed some rules whereby classical physics was incomplete, and the electron just wasn't allowed to tumble all the way into the nucleus. But these rules didn't come with a coherent set of equations. You couldn't really calculate the energy states of an atom. Bohr proposed that there were energy states, and he had some sort of arbitrary rules for what they would be in a few cases. But the 1910s were a period of tremendous experimental progress, and lots of discoveries were made that gave clues that a new kind of theory was needed. And eventually it was put in its contemporary form in the 1920s, when physicists got the brilliant idea that an electron, although it looks like a particle in most respects, can also be treated as a wave. And somehow the wave-like properties of the electron cause it to be spread out and make it impossible for the electron to spiral all the way into the atomic nucleus. Um, there was an amazing constellation of intellectual history and the development of technology that made the size of experiments testing this possible at almost the same time that the theoretical idea emerged. The decisive of experiments were made by shining a beam of, of electrons on a crystal of atoms and looking at the directions with which the electrons emerge. So if you treat the electron as a classical point particle, it could come out in any direction. But waves have special behavior, which in everyday life you see, for example, if you see a rainbow in the sky, where scattered waves come out at preferred directions. A rainbow is created because the preferred direction depends on the color of the light. For an electron, the color corresponds to the electron's energy. When it scatters from a crystal, it will come off with preferred directions depending on its energy. And this was actually observed experimentally in around 1925 by Davison and Germer. If you're curious where they got the electron beams that they scattered from their crystal, well, uh, old-fashioned televisions, not the modern plasma screens, but old-fashioned televisions were based on creating electron beams that make light spots when they meet the screen that you see. So um, technology creating electron beams has been important in the last century. And one of its applications was to test this basic idea of quantum theory. Da sempre gli scienziati, nel tentativo di giungere a una visione completa e risolutiva delle leggi naturali che governano l'universo, cercano di formulare teorie sempre nuove e più ampie. Alla fine del XVII secolo, Isaac Newton compie un passo fondamentale nella comprensione dei diversi aspetti della natura, unificando la fisica terrestre e quella celeste. La visione di Newton rimane invariata fino a quando Einstein solleva nuove questioni. 
Nella fisica newtoniana la forza gravitazionale si trasmette istantaneamente attraverso lo spazio da un corpo all'altro. Questo è incompatibile con la relatività ristretta che afferma che niente può viaggiare a una velocità superiore a quella della luce. Einstein, superando la visione di Newton, arriva a proporre una nuova legge di gravitazione che espone con la teoria della relatività generale. La teoria della relatività diviene uno dei pilastri fondamentali della fisica contemporanea. L'altro è costituito dalla meccanica quantistica, che ha origine con la teoria dei quanti formulata nel 1900 da Max Planck. Mentre la relatività generale fornisce un quadro di riferimento per la comprensione delle leggi universali a livello macroscopico, la meccanica quantistica spiega le proprietà dell'universo a livello atomico e subatomico e mostra che in alcuni casi i concetti che stanno alla base della fisica einsteiniana non hanno valore se applicati a scale molto piccole. Per questo motivo le due teorie appaiono in contraddizione e anche se entrambe sono state confermate sperimentalmente sembrano tra loro incompatibili. Questo dilemma costituisce il nodo centrale della fisica contemporanea, superabile solo con una nuova teoria unificata, in grado di descrivere tutte le forze della natura all'interno di un quadro coerente. Molti studiosi vedono oggi nell'innovativa e affascinante teoria delle stringhe una possibile risposta a questa esigenza. By now, physicists have learned that when they've got two different theories that describe different things, it's important to try to make them work together and see what happens. Einstein had invented special relativity because the theory of light didn't agree well with Newton's laws, and he had invented general relativity because of a similar problem involving Newton's theory of gravity. And then quantum mechanics had been invented because the existence of the electron seemed to contradict the wave theory of light. So by the time quantum mechanics was invented, this idea that you had to take seriously contradictions between existing theories was well established. And one of the first things that the physicists started to consider was how the new theory of quantum mechanics could be combined with Einstein's work. So 